Hey, it's Monday about noon. I'm about to make myself some lunch and Smartathon has begun. Yay! Um, I've also decided because of Smartathon to try Audible for the very first time. So I've so far listened to the first three chapters of The Hating Game by Sally Horn. Um, and I'm enjoying it. The authors, the, the reader, I should say, is um narrator, what's the word? Uh, of the audiobook is fine. Um I'm not loving the main character. She is painting herself in a, I think, incorrect, favourable light, and I'm not liking her too much. Um, I far more like her counterpart, her male counterpart, who she hates, and somehow she's not making, uh, somehow she's not succeeding in making me hate him. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna listen to that whilst I make myself some lunch now. I also started reading Christmas by the Sea. Um, I got my very first uh, arc via NetGalley. Unfortunately, I think it's not very smutty. But having said that, The Hating Game, listen to the first three hours, uh, sorry, feels like three hours, mm, first three chapters, which is about an hour. And so far, no steam. One scene of her very vividly imagining strangling her him, but not in a sexy way. <laughs> so I hope it will get a little bit more smutty now so I don't fail on the main purpose of this readathon on the very first day and I will check in with you later though. Hey pup! <laughs> yeah! Hi! Hi! Hi, good girl. <laughs> hey, it's um, around noon on Tuesday and it's finally happened after almost 10 hours in the Hating Game audiobook. Hope I'm not spoiling anything. There is still much lacking on the smutty department. Um, and I'm finally now interested in the, the plot of the storyline and the a possible job prospect of the two main characters. Shock horror. They've left me waiting so long for actual sex that I'm now also focusing on other things that are happening in the story. Who would have thought? I'm gonna make some lunch now. I just got home. This one's happy to see me, which is nice. I'm gonna make myself some lunch um, and listen to the last hour, hour and a half on the Hating Game audiobook. Um, and I'm um, looking forward to be done with it. Hey, it's Tuesday afternoon and I just finished The Hating Game on my spiffy headphones. Um, and <laughs> even though I really enjoyed listening to it, I'm not sure, this is going to sound really lame, like, this should not be something that concerns me listening to a book like this, but it kind of bugs me that the messages that a to-be-desired relationship should include playing games. Um, so I'm a bit torn on this one. I really liked the reader, um, Katie Shore, I believe, of the audiobook, um, but I didn't love The Hating Game as much as I thought I would, disappointedly. Um, so I think I'm going to jump into something else pretty quickly, maybe just something on my Kindle to give myself a bit of a break from all the audiobook listening. I tried to listen to this one on like faster speed because I hear that loads of people on booktube do that to get through audiobooks quicker, like listening to it double on double the speed. Um, but I tried like only like one and a half times the speed and that already sounded so dis distorted and robotic to me that that won't work for me. So, uh, da 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 da. I'm going to clean up a little bit the mess that I made from lunch and then consider what book I'm going to get into next. Hi, it's Wednesday 11 o'clock and I've just sat down with a cup of tea and I'm continuing reading Christmas Secrets by the Sea. I looked up what it was called now uh, by Jane Lovering. Um, and I think this might just turn out to be like a pretty box standard romance, non-smutty read which is a bit of a shame given that it is the Smutathon, but hey, The Hating Game only had like steamy sex scenes on 0.5% of the whole book. So uh, I have to make sure that my next book is like seriously hot. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna sit down, um, have my tea in a confusing Guinness cup and read a little bit more. It's Wednesday evening now. I am 60% into Christmas Secrets by the Sea. It's not smutty. I'm reading it anyway. I'm enjoying it. 
Um, but I'm about to go to meet some friends at the Christmas market, um, book club friends. So we are doing a book swap thingy, which I think is a really nice idea. We're all um, giving away a book that we own, have read, or haven't read, in any case that we don't want to keep, um, and that we don't mind parting with. So I have to look through my books and decide on what to give away. Um, and I'm not entirely sure. Probably, I will probably take the, the Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender with me. Um, this was a, a weird little book, I actually liked it, um, but I didn't love it, love it, and but I don't need to hang on to it, so probably this one. Um, I'm curious to see what the others bring. Um, I think it's a fun, uh, fun idea, and interesting what kind of book people bring with them as well, I think, so I have to get ready and go soon um and um we'll see i probably won't get loads more reading done today but that does mean i've spent a whole day with zero smut um so i'll have to make up for that tomorrow hey it's thursday evening now eight something like that uh, i just got back from a weightlifting workshop at my gym which was interesting indeed this morning i didn't catch you guys up i finished christmas secrets by the sea by jane lovering which comes out today um came out today i should rather say um this was actually a really nice romance novel set on the south english coast of dorset and follows a woman who had it all leaves london loses her boyfriend and her cupcake um business um, because of secrets and she meets a broody Irish actor on the t who's filming on a TV show that they film the seaside where she's sort of run away from London to be at and he also has secrets and um, they both have a dog which just makes every love story better in my opinion um, there was like zero level smut in this one um, it was really much more about their friendship. They were really, like, not, this was not a smutty pick, um, but I read it in the week of Smutathon anyway, so I'm going to tell you about it. I've now read the first 30 pages in. I'm glancing down to see what it's called Warm Me in Winter. I was planning on reading this. I talked about it in my TBR. This is the second book in the uh, Love by the Seasons series by Jess Fon, I think the author's called. Um, and right in the first few pages, we are reminded of the main two characters in the first book, Fall, Fall Into Love, I think that was called, not sure now. Um, so that's nice, we get to know how things sort of panned out for them, but very clearly our new character is the best friend of the female character that was the main protagonist in the first book. I'm making this more con complicated than necessary. She is a dancer and she's come to this small town somewhere in, I don't know, the Midwest, I think. And she already has commented on the fine behind of the small town cop. And the small town cop has already thought about her amazingly sexy legs in some insane stiletto shoes. So this is far more promising as far as the smut level goes. Um, we'll see how that turns out. I'm gonna read a little bit right now. I think my boyfriend's cooking, so I'm going to try to um, profit from that um, and see how much I can still read today. Hey, it's 10.30 on Friday and I'm 70% into Warmy in Winter by Jess Fun. Um, so I've got like another 80 pages to go or something like that. Um, I'm really enjoying it. There's something nice about reading like a... Um, dog's bugging me, sorry. Um, about reading about a professional dancer getting on with a well-built brooding police cop. So many stereotypes, but I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping to finish that today. It's really quick read, 80 pages should be fine. Um, and then I'll have to see what I read next. Um, it took a little while for the couple to get it on, um, maybe like 50% in or so, so I'm kind of wondering whether, does this also count as a slow burn? Probably not. Slow burn I feel like has to take longer, so um, I'm not really sure what prompt I'm counting this for. Either way, if I just get to read like a lot of smutty books, that's fine. They don't have to fit perfectly the, to the prompts, I think. 
Um, but yeah, maybe I'll have a better idea once I've finished it. So I have about like another 40 pages or so in Warm and Winter left and I'm gonna risk a spoiler. Whatever, this is a reading vlog. I really, really like the couple. I'm really rooting for them. One thing I really, really dislike though in romance novels, when the whole I love you topic is breached when they're having sex. <laughs> because you're going to feel things in that moment that might not be that close to what you feel during all the other hours of the day or like, I don't know I feel like it's worthless when you've just had like an orgasm to think I love you I think that's worthless so something along those lines just happened to that book this is yeah annoying 40 more pages to go or so of course they're totally smitten with each other that's not a surprise but I didn't like how it was introduced in that scene what do you think I'm going to try and finish this now. Maybe it can still redeem itself somehow. Two o'clock and I just finished Warm Me in Winter by Jess Fun on my Kindle. Um, it was really sweet. I even cried a little, which I feel very lame about. Um, yeah, as to how I'd categorise it or what prompt it fits with, maybe Slow Burn if you consider having to read a bit more than 100 pages first before you actually get to some action between the two people involved. Um, action, I said that weird. Um, um, but you could maybe also use the prompt Different Worlds. Um, Brie, the main character who falls for Carter, the small town cop, uh, come from Different Worlds. She has a huge lump of money and has traveled the world and danced for all kinds of dance companies. This is this beautiful, amazing uh, ballerina. And he's this small town cop. So why not? I can also choose it for that. Then, you know, I'm kind of getting some of the prompts out of the way. Um, I gotta go clean up a little bit now. Um, so maybe I'll do an audiobook, although I haven't really decided. And I'll check out if any of the books that I was meaning to read are available on audiobook. And if not, I'll just have to listen to some music or something. Um, yeah, but I'll see you guys later. Good morning, it's Saturday, 9 o'clock, and I'm still in bed. I'm not feeling too great. Um, like, headachey, but... I'm about halfway through the audiobook of Samantha Young's Fight or Flight, in which our two main protagonists meet at a not-so-cute meet-cute um, at an airport, and so far... This can only be described as an enemies to lovers trope again. So I'm not being very uh, spread out over all the challenges, unfortunately. Um, I'm quite liking the story, but the narrator of the audiobook is hilarious. The, the main character is from Scotland. And I swear she doesn't do it any better than me. I am awful at doing accents. And she does this not very good Scottish accent Scottish accent paired with a, a sort of a raspy voice it, it's really weird it's like involuntarily funny um <laughs> so that's choking me up a little especially during like nice love like lovey scenes or sex scenes that really throws you off a bit if then the guy like you have to laugh about how one of the characters sounds um so <laughs> I'm not sure I would actually recommend the audiobook but I'm it it makes me laugh so I'm going to continue listening to that a little bit um, my boyfriend was so kind to go out with the dog so he's out at the moment um, and I can still like lie in bed a bit listen to an audiobook which is also actually a really nice thing about audiobooks I've noticed when you have a bit of a headache reading sometimes isn't that nice Hello, coming at you with this very classy shot of me in my bathroom. There's probably a glorious echo. I just had a bath, it's Saturday evening. Um, I'm still tired. Still, again, something like that. I'm going to go to bed now. I have three quarters of an hour of the audiobook of Fight or Flight left, so I'm going to try and listen to that um, and finish that this evening. Um, and don't like it. <laughs> um, I think the, the male main character is really aggravating. Um, it's turned super angsty with um, the main protagonist, her best friend, and the male love interest. Um, I don't understand their problems. Um, and the problems that I do understand, I understand because they are like really mega and like not what I was expecting in a sort of fluffy uh, romance novel. Um, 
yeah also i don't love the narrator she is at times both kind of robotic and then she does like the weird accent things and she sort of does then exclaim and put emotion in like certain things that she says um i'm not loving it but i'm gonna finish it um and then tomorrow is the very last day and i will check in with you of course and see what i get up to tomorrow good morning it's a sunday morning and um we're having the first snow not loads of it but a little um yeah i finished fight or flight yesterday i really didn't like it um i'm thinking two stars maybe even just one i thought it was all over the place i didn't appreciate the angst i thought the conclusion at the end came sort of then sort of suddenly it didn't really make sense i kind of had to wish that she would have had the the gumption to just give me an ending i sort of knew she wouldn't but would have made more sense given the storyline uh, I, yeah, really didn't like it. Um, and I didn't like the narrator particularly for the audiobook either. So maybe I would have liked the book itself more. Not, I'm, I'm not sure. I, also, the book didn't really know. Did it just want to be angstiness? Did it want to be romance? Did it want to be smart? Um, it just was everything and nothing. Didn't love it. Um, then this morning I read the first two chapters or so of, um, uh, on my e-reader. Um, and another arc I got from Egali, I'm super happy how that panned out. A called Friends Without Benefit, so I'm not very far on with that yet, but um, I'll keep on reading that during the day now, however. I'm outside with my dog, uh, and I'm going to let her run through the snow a little bit. Hey, Bonnie. Sit. Stay. Get it free. <laughs> Good girl. Hey, it's uh, 1.30 on Sunday and I'm halfway through Dina Blake's Friends Without Benefits. I think it's called, yes. Uh, and I really like it so far. Father love story is really, really sweet. Um, and I've gotten my share of smut. So as far as the reader thun goes, this has been the best pick so far. Um, it's about two women falling in love and one of them hopefully finding a new chance after having pined over her straight best friend for years and years and years um and i think her best friend is kind of going to mess it all up a bit um but so far there's been relatively little angst and drama which i appreciate the drama not actually being between the two that we're rooting for but sort of the the best friend who i hope will stay out of it in the end and um, we'll see um yeah really good one so far halfway through maybe i can finish it later we're going off to meet some friends now so maybe not um I'll, we'll, we'll see so now it's monday and smartathon is over it ended yesterday i didn't quite complete friends without benefits but i finished that this morning and i think i'm giving that like um three out of five probably um i liked that it is actually about two adults who both are open about the fact that they like each other and they end up in a relationship. I had very little of that during Smartathon. Um, and it's just sort of the beginning of a relationship that you really root for. Um, I thought a lot of the, a lot of the storyline with the, the best friend sort of getting in between them and just being a bit of a, just being a bad friend, being a sort of controlling, jealous, bad, like bad best friend, um, was over the top maybe I just have better friends than that um and I thought it was solved in quite a weak way in the end um but I I liked reading a book that was a bit different I thought it was interesting this being the only uh book that I read that had two same sex um adults in the relationship that ironically this was the one where there was the least uh, cat and mouse chasing I love them but they can't know like they were actually nice to each other um, so that was a fresh uh, wind fresh breath of air um, so all in all I read or listened to 
five books during Smartathon, which I am thrilled about. One of those, The uh, Christmas Secrets by the Sea, didn't really end up qualifying as being a smutty read. Um, and that one, as well as Friends Without Benefits by Dina Blake, were given given to me by NetGalley, so I didn't pay for them. I also tried out Audible for the very first time, um, which was actually really cool. I really do like listening to audiobooks and listening to the ones that I um, want to re listen to. Like, I'm very limited by my local library when it comes to audiobooks. Um, and listening to sort of smutty content, I actually thought was less sexy over audio than reading it myself somehow. I always got distracted by sort of thinking about how the narrator chose to read something. Um, but on the whole, like a romance novel as an audiobook I thought was really good because it's just easy to keep track of the story. I find myself um, missing details when it's a sort of more literary work, um, although that sounds super snobbish. Um, I loved Smartathon, I thought it was great fun. I read something like 1,000, I think I calculated it and was roughly 1,340 pages if you add up everything uh, that I consumed over the week. Um, thank you so much um, to the hosts of the Smartathon, it was a great time. Um, and now I need a break from romance. <laughs> it was a lot of the same stuff. I was unlucky with some of the the, the tags that I chose. I felt like everything ended up being uh, enemies to lovers and um, some stuff that was portrayed really rubbed me up the wrong game. Um, I didn't love the hating game. I didn't love the message of um, a relationship only being exciting if you play loads of games um, with each other. Fight or Flight I thought was a really bad audiobook. I really didn't enjoy that one. I didn't like the narrator. Uh, but I also really didn't like the fact that the male love interest was just an asshole and she focuses, the, 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 the woman that goes along with that guy, focus on the fact that he's the only guy that was ever truthful to her and honest. And I just think if you just are being an honest asshole, that doesn't actually make you that much of a better person. Um, and the author in Fight or Flight chooses to cover quite heavy topics. There's uh, so there's like trigger warning for like domestic abuse in this one, but just as there is domestic abuse in one relationship, the main relationship that the story is about also I think has so much unkindness and just emotional abuse and like telling the other person what something that you know will hurt them the most and that's then the relationship I'm supposed to root for. I didn't root for them and I was a bit disappointed that the author didn't choose to make more of a standing when it come to, came to the conclusion of that relationship. A ah, bit of a tangent. Anyway, Smartathon, great fun. Let me know what you read um, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye!